um, and listening to submissions very, very carefully. Thank you. I call Denise Roach. Five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I have some concerns whenever this government uh, and their members mention the word flexibility and simplifying, because it seems to me that it's frequently a way of eroding democracy. This is the third local government bill that this House has seen, and it's the third opportunity that this government has had to run roughshod over local government. But there have been other opportunities as well. So they've also introduced the Housing Accords and Special Housing Areas Bill, which undermines planning in Auckland, the Land Transport Management Act, which means that councils have to have transport strategies that are consistent with the government's own priorities, which again rubs, runs roughshod over councils. We've seen the removal of the four well-beings from the Local Government Act in the last tranche of reforms, and we've seen re restrictions on councils and their involvement with the Biosecurity Act recently. And I remind the House that local government is where local representatives make local decisions for their local communities, and this bill endangers that. While we Greens do support the aims of this bill for more efficient use of resources, we're concerned about the potential for forced amalgamations, much like the Auckland forced amalgamation. That was a forced amalgamation, and we're not particularly happy to see that happening elsewhere in the country. Yes, councils should be encouraged and have been working together, and they should be encouraged to work together more for the provision of services. But councils should not be forced to amalgamate, and certainly they should not be replaced with local boards. Now, the provisions in this bill to enable local boards to, um, to occur in other local government amalgamations or in existing councils um, does worry us, because we don't see local boards as the magic bullet. Local boards have the ability to advocate, and they do that very strongly, and they represent their communities well in Auckland. They definitely do that. However, they haven't got the ability to set rates, they haven't got the ability to determine how those rates are spent, and they can only advocate to their governing bodies. This government seems to have an idea that super councils are the way to go, that bigger is better. But I can assure this House that that's not always true, and certainly what we've seen in Auckland is the reduction in democracy, specifically with the, with the creation of council-controlled organisations. And it's incredibly worrying that this bill sets up a similar system where local government, uh, local, the Local Government Commission can actually be um, advocating for more council-controlled organisations, which rests control of decision-making away from the democratically elected representatives. We're also concerned about this bill's changes to the Act around consultation processes, particularly on long-term plans. We understand that consultation can be difficult, that, um, uh, that sometimes it does take time. But actually, it's a democratic process, and we do need to ensure that people have the ability to hold their democratically elected councillors to account about the decisions they're making for them over the long term. And we're concerned that the simplifying aspect in this part of the bill will mean that people are shut out or that, decision, or, or that information about those decisions will be withheld or ignored. It's obvious to us also throughout this bill that the privatisation agenda that this government has for state assets continues with, their, with what they are attempting to put into this bill for um, council-controlled assets, in particular with their requirement to review cost effectiveness, uh, their requirement in the bill that to review cost effectiveness of service delivery arrangements and for councils to consider, consider alternative options. And when we've asked officials what that means, it means that councils should be considering, considering the private provision of services that councils have run um, or CCOs. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member. The time has come for me to leave the chair for the dinner break. This debate is interrupted. I shall resume the chair at 7.30.
Live coverage from the House of Representatives will resume at 7.30pm. Until then, some of today's earlier proceedings will be repeated.